Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Jordan Stone, and I am a financial counselor with Apprizen. And today we are here to go over a uh, presentation from Capital One called the Virtual Credit Voyage. So this workshop is based on content developed by Ideas42 with generous support from Capital One. This workshop is not intended to provide financial advice or guidance. Instead, we're here to help provide key terms and share best practices that can help improve your relationship with money. Any opinions or advice that I'm giving you today is advice from myself and Apprizen and not necessarily Capital Ones. So just to help you out through this presentation, it would be helpful to have you know, pen and paper or your phone or laptop or tablet to write down some things that you've learned. Where you'll go along your journey. Step one is come to this presentation. The second step is you're gonna choose your destination. Your third step is you're gonna learn why credit matters and ways to improve it. And the fourth step is gonna be charting your next steps. And after today, You'll continue your journey to your destination. Step two, we're going to choose your destination. Journeys are tough, but the destination is worth it. Your destination is your goal. What goal could strong credit help me reach? Your destination might be home ownership. You might want to buy a home. You might want to get a new car or lease a new car. Um, you might want to go on a dream vacation, or your destination might be to open a new credit card. So you need to figure out what your destination is and why it's an important destination to you. Make sure it's something that's going to bring meaning and value to your life. Step three, why credit matters. What is a credit score? So a credit score is a number that summarizes how likely lenders think you are to repay credit. In other terms, essentially it's a score showing how good of a borrower you are viewed as. So a good credit score can qualify you for loans uh, to buy a car or home, uh, paying for school, or getting a credit card. And usually a higher score will give you access to better interest rates. If you're watching this, hopefully you have seen your credit score. If you haven't, that's okay. There's plenty of resources out there to help you find your credit score and monitor it. No matter what your score might be today, you're in the right place to improve it. So, like I said, if you have not, you know, checked your credit score, there are, are many ways to do it. So you can check your credit score through CreditWise from Capital One or by using other tools such as Credit Karma. Uh, any other, you know, bank has an app that usually will give you feedback for your credit score and your credit history and give you, you know, some tips for improving your credit based off of what's happening in your credit file. Also, you can uh, pull your three major credit reports for free from annualcreditreport.com. And that way you can actually go through your credit history on your own and see exactly what's being reported and how. So, you might be asking yourself, why does credit matter? Well, here's a little story showing why credit does matter. Let's say Ms. Garcia and Mr. Jones both want to buy the same car. They both apply for and receive a three-year loan for a $10,000 vehicle. Okay, they both have the same loan. No problem here. However, after three years, Mr. Jones has paid almost $3,000 more than Ms. Garcia. Why do you think that happened? Well, that's because Mr. Jones has a very low credit score of 420, which qualified him for a very high interest rate on his vehicle at 20%. So instead of you know, 
having a, a nice low interest rate because of his credit score being as low as it is, he was stuck at that 20% interest rate and he paid $13,378 on the loan of $10,000. Whereas Miss Garcia's credit score is 720, which is very good. And that qualified her for a low 3.5% interest rate. So 16 and a half percent lower interest. She paid $10,548. So there is a cost to borrow money. The cost of borrowing money, also called interest, can be affected by two main factors. So the interest rate that you actually get on a product or loan, or the time it takes you to pay that item or loan off. So if it takes you longer versus someone that's making extra payments as they're able, then you're going to pay more money in interest you know, to get that debt paid off versus someone making an extra payment. Higher credit scores can make it cheaper to borrow. So the higher your credit score is, chances are the lower the interest rate you're gonna get on things like car loans and mortgages. And then therefore you're paying less to borrow that money. And a higher credit score will also of course, increase your chance for approval for that mortgage or car loan or credit card. A strong credit score has five components that make it up. So the most important is going to be your payment history. And that consists of, you know, the idea of paying things consistently and on time, not having any delinquencies on your credit report. And that makes up 35% of your score. 30% of your score is based upon credit utilization, which is the percentage of your available credit AKA your credit limit that you spent or borrowed. 15% of your score is made up by the credit history that you have. So that might be the length of time your accounts have been open and how often you, you're utilizing your credit. 10% of your score is consisted of new credit. So new credit tracks are you opening accounts constantly? Are you taking on new loans or, or opening up an abundance of credit cards too often? And then 10% is made up by your credit mix. So if someone has a good mix of credit, things like student loans, credit cards, cars, um, a mortgage, if you have maybe an item from each of those categories, you're going to have a good score from the credit mix area versus someone that might have only student loans on their credit report or you know might have just one credit card and that's it or just a car loan and that's it they are not going to max out their score with the credit mix area what are the two most important factors to a credit score payment history and credit utilization remember that now remember also it takes time to build a strong credit score after you first take out debt, it can take months or years to build a strong credit score. Meaning if you're new to credit, it's going to take some time to, to get your score up into that good territory, which we would say is going to be into the 700s is where a good credit score is. Now, how do you get there once you, you have a new credit started? You need to be repaying consistently and on time. So making your monthly payments, hopefully paying your balances off in full every month if you're using credit cards. If not, hopefully at least you're staying under 30% of your credit limit. And then making sure you're keeping your accounts open, active, in good standing, not letting any payments be late um, or anything like that, because that will get your cards closed and therefore they will be inactive and that will affect your credit score. Taking out debt isn't always the best strategy. That can be bad if it's attached to an expensive high interest rate, like a really high interest rate car loan, because it's gonna take you a long time to repay and you're going to pay a lot of money to borrow a high interest car loan. That can help strengthen your credit score if you're able to get a low interest rate 
because then you can pay it off in a reasonable amount of time and it helps you build a history of paying consistently and on time. Paying more than the minimum can have a huge impact on your debt. So take a look at this chart. We have three people that all got a loan for $2,500 and they have the interest rate of 18%, which is rather high. Mr. Lewis, he's just paying his monthly payment. It takes him 19 years and he pays $4,828 in total interest in addition to the initial balance. Miss Davis, she makes a little higher payment than Mr. Lewis, but she only ends up paying $2,356 in interest and takes 10 years to pay that balance off. Now, Miss Clark, she is able to make more than that minimum monthly payment. In fact, she's paying $100 more monthly than Mr. Lewis, but look, she only paid $444 in interest and only took her two years to pay it off. Whereas, you know, Mr. Lewis paying the minimums, it took him another 17 years and over $4,400 more in interest to get that paid off. Remember, the time to pay off your debt is part of the cost of borrowing money. The longer it takes, the more you're going to pay to borrow that money. Think to yourself for a second. Is anything I've talked about surprised you so far? What will you remember for tomorrow? All right, step four, charting the next steps. During this next section, we'll review four strategies that can help you strengthen your credit. As we review them, think about one strategy you'd most like to pursue, the one that feels most relevant to your life, and write it down. Not all of them will be for everyone and will help you choose. These are the four strategies that you have to choose from. You want to pay your bills on time. You want to manage the accounts you have. Stay under 30% of your credit limit or start building your credit. Strategy number one, start building a credit history. Having a credit history and score can be important to accessing financial opportunities in the future. Without either, you can be limited in your ability to achieve your financial goal. With this strategy, you will work towards building a credit history, starting with a secured credit card. Believe it or not, if you are new to credit, you're not alone. Over 25 million American adults don't have a credit history. If you want to improve your payment history, this is for you. A single missed payment can drop your credit score by as many as 100 points. Your payment history is an important factor in calculating credit scores. Remember, 35% of your score is determined by payment history. With this strategy, you'll be working towards paying your bills consistently and on time. Strategy number three is to stay under 30% of your credit limit. Keeping credit card utilization, the total amount that you charge divided by your sum of your credit limits, below 30% can boost your credit score significantly. With this strategy, you'll learn tactics to stay under 30% of your credit limit. Once you get past that 30%, you're going to start negatively affecting your credit score. If you just want to manage your accounts, Remember, having a longer account history, a mix of different types of credit, and fewer inquiries can moderately affect your credit score. So, you know, if you're lacking in that department, maybe consider, okay, do I have the ability to maybe get one, uh, one more credit card and have it be something I can pay off monthly in full and not carry a balance on? That way I have a mix of accounts to add into my student loans and car loan. With this strategy, you'll work towards maintaining old accounts and opening new accounts or credit lines with caution. Think about which strategy you chose. There will be a link to this sheet in the description of this video. So on this sheet, you know, this is going to be your plan for your strategy. 
and you're going to come up with the what, how, where of steps you need to take to execute whichever strategy you picked. Review and choose one step that you can take now. Go ahead and write something down that you can do right now. Review and choose a step you can do in the future. Write that down, and we're about to go over those. So based on your strategy, choose a step that you can do now. You want to pay bills on time? Okay, then make sure you know your due dates. Set up reminders to pay your account or set up automatic payments. You want to stay under 30% of the credit limit? Calculate what that limit is and make sure you're staying under that. You can set balance alerts. So as you get close to that limit, you know, you can have the, the bank send you a notification to let you know, hey, stop spending on this credit card for now, pay it off, and then you can maintain that spending so you don't go past that limit. If you want to manage your accounts, make a list of all your accounts. You see if there's something you can maybe close um, while keeping the oldest account or two open. If you have six or seven credit cards maybe you don't need that many maybe you would be just fine with two or three make sure to keep one or two of your oldest ones open you want to start building credit identify which secured card you want to apply for some savings steps identify opportunities to reduce expenses eating out less um you know, not buying snacks on your way home from work, stuff like that. Cancel subscriptions to things you're not using anymore, magazines or entertainment accounts, streaming sites. Compare prices for your insurances, your phone plan, internet. See if there's something you can reduce. Make sure you're comparing prices when you're purchasing something. So let's say my plan is to calculate my total utilization. I'm going to do that by using my credit monitoring app. And I'm going to do it tonight after I put my kids down for bedtime. Based on your strategy that you chose, choose a step that you can do in the future. So for paying bills on time, pay at least the minimum each billing period and pick a saving step on the right side. You want to stay under your credit limit? Check your utilization amount weekly. Make more regular payments throughout the month. It's not going to hurt you to make payments more often or pay more than your minimum payment. If you want to manage your accounts better, make sure you check your credit report at least once a year through annualcreditreport.com to make sure you're aware of everything you have. Pay off your high interest accounts right away. Make small payments with the oldest accounts to keep them active. So if you have a 20 year old credit card, you don't need to necessarily use it all that often. You can just buy a pack of gum on it, you know, every three or four months just to keep it, you know, active and let the bank know, hey, I'm still using this, don't close it. Use a credit monitoring tool you know, like Credit Wise, Credit Karma, to regularly see what your score is doing. If you want to start building credit, apply for a secured card and make sure to repay credit card debt consistently. Visualize what it will look like to reach your destination. Think about how you're going to feel, what you might be wearing, who's with you, you know, what you might be thinking at the time, you should be proud to, to reach your destination. Be as detailed as you can. Research shows that visualizing your goal can help you achieve that. Now, going back to our sheet, the second step is something I'm gonna do in the future. So, what? I'm going to make more regular payments throughout the month. And how am I going to do that? Setting up automatic payments to happen every two weeks. So every first and every 15th of each month, I'm going to be making automatic payments on my cards. And I'm going to set that up again when I get my kids down for bedtime. 
Now, you need to think about what obstacles might come up as you try to do your next steps and reach your destination. How are you going to overcome them? Research shows that thinking about overcoming obstacles can help you tackle them and achieve your goal. Plan for the worst, and I promise you will reach your goal. So let's just say, you know, if I face the challenge of my car breaking down and needing a bunch of repair, but, you know, I'm in the middle of trying to minimize my credit utilization, what will I do? So let's say that's my challenge, then I will just make that payment on my credit card as soon as that charge posts. Let's say I had to get, you know, a two thousand dollar car repair done on, uh, and I had to put it on a, a credit card where I had a three thousand dollar limit. Well, that's not going to keep me under thirty percent of my credit utilization. So I, instead, I'm just going to go ahead and make a two thousand dollar payment on that card, just you know, to, to keep moving towards my goal of increasing my credit score by using my credit less. Use a reminder app or your calendar app to, you know, set reminders for your goals. Make sure to write down your steps either on your phone or a paper calendar. Take a picture of your plan and set it as a lock screen on your phone. You know, just that way as you go about your day, you won't be tempted to veer off your plan or to do something that's going to go against what your plan is. Or, you know, you could write a reminder on a slip of paper and put it in your wallet, tape it to a credit card. So every time you, you pull your wallet out to spend money on something, you can get a little reminder and make you kind of second guess if it's something you need to be purchasing. That's it for the presentation. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you were able to decide on one of the four strategies. You will reach your destination if you come up with a plan and iron out all the details. Thanks.